Remember eight months ago when I said there were some big changes happening to the Society of Actuaries exams? Well, for many of you and many of our Actuary Accelerator community members, you're wondering specifically what happens to exam P and FM. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all the details about the changes because the new syllabus for exam P and FM have just been released and now there are definitely some changes you're going to want to know about. Plus, I'm also going to give recommendations on whether you should take those exams as soon as possible or if you should wait until the new changes are implemented. I'm Bria, Associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their actuarial dream job all without an internship. Okay, so let's start with exam P. Now these exam P changes go into effect starting on the September 2022 exam. And the good news here is that the biggest changes are really just in the distribution of the topics. So there has been a reallocation of the topics. And what I mean by that is basically there are three main high level topics that are tested on exam P. General probability, univariate random variables, and multivariate random variables. Now on the current syllabus, this is the breakdown of the distribution. Now here is a breakdown of how the distribution of topics is going to change. Change. So for general probability right now on the current syllabus, about 10 to 17% of the exam is testing general probability. In the September exam and beyond, it's going to be about 23 to 30% of the exam. So that means general probability is being tested a bit more than it was in the past. Now for univariate random variables, it goes from about 40 to 47% currently. On the new syllabus, it's going to make up about 44 to 50% of the exam. So there's really not much change there. For multivariate random variables, in the current syllabus, it makes up about 40 to 47 percent of the exam topics or questions, whereas on the new syllabus, it's only going to make up about 23 to 30 percent. So we are seeing a reduction in how much of the exam is geared towards multivariate random variables. Overall, though, it's looking like they're going to test each topic a bit more evenly than before. So it's less likely that you're going to be able to get away with, let's say, a poor knowledge in general probability like you may have been able to get away with before. Now let's look at the changes a bit deeper. It seems that the Society of Actuaries has removed a few topics completely, which is great news. I will get to those. But if you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, I just want you to know that you can go to the exam resources section of the AAC and get a complete breakdown of what changed on exam P topic by topic. Okay, so in terms of removal, they have completely removed moment generating functions. Yay! and probability generating functions. Those were some of the topics I hated the most on exam P, so I'm actually pretty glad to hear those are gone now. They've also removed transformations from the syllabus. And now also most of the multivariate section, the third section that we talked about, now focuses primarily on discrete random variables, whereas before it was a combination of discrete random variables and continuous random variables. So that will be a nice change for anyone taking exam P in the future. It also appears that these two topics have been added to the syllabus for exam P. However, I know that these topics were tested in the past. It was probably just that they are getting more specific about how they are being tested. In the past, they were probably covered under transformations and MGFs. Now, if you are in the beginner or rising phase of your actuarial journey, then taking exam P is definitely not something that should be on your radar right now. You have other things to do that are more important. But if you are in the intermediate phase of your actuarial journey, then you're probably considering taking exam P now or in the near future. Now, I anticipate that these changes to the syllabus are going to reduce your study time by about two to four weeks, which is great, but because it's not really that much less, I would not recommend delaying your exam just so that you can take it in September. So if you were planning to take exam P in, let's say May or July, the two remaining sittings, then I would just go ahead and take them then because there's no point in waiting in until September just to save a few weeks of study time. Now again, for our AAC members, there are exam P study materials in the AAC already, and those will be updated for the new syllabus. And also there's our exam P study group, exam P tutoring sessions, and an exam P forum where you can get all your questions answered. If you are not a member of the AAC, enrollment opens up again next week from April 18th to the 21st. So make sure you get on the wait list for that by going to 
stretchedactuarial.com slash accelerator. And there you're going to get the wait list so that you can get into the AAC and access all these resources when it opens up next week. Okay, so now let's move on to exam FM changes. But before we get into that, if this video has been helpful for you so far, could you please give it a thumbs up so that it can spread to more future actuaries that may be taking exam P or FM in the near future. I would appreciate that so, 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 so much. Okay, so the exam FM changes go into effect October 2022. And one of the more significant changes here is that the exam is no longer three hours long. Instead, it's going to be only two and a half hours long and the number of questions tested is going from 35 down to 30. Now, this might seem like a good thing, but it's really not because it means that the average amount of time you have to answer each question is actually decreased. So on the current syllabus, you get an average of five minutes and eight seconds, actually a tiny bit more than that, to answer each question. Whereas with the new syllabus, having to answer 30 questions in just two and a half hours leaves you with an average of five minutes per question. Now that might not seem like a very big difference, but time does add up on the exam. So you are going to have to go quite a bit quicker now. Now for exam FM, the majority of the topics have stayed the same, which is generally good news. So under time value, value of money, annuities, bonds, loans, immunization, general cash flows, and portfolios. Pretty much all of that has stayed the same. There is one exception. You no longer have to know the time and dollar weighted rate of returns, which is something that a lot of people got confused on, so I'm glad those are gone. And they've also completely removed topics under interest rate swaps and determinants of interest, which is basically where you learn the different factors that impact interest rates. So those two topics are completely removed from the exam now. So now on the screen you're seeing a comparison of the distribution of topics tested on the exam very similar to what we looked at for exam P. So as an example if we look at annuities currently on the syllabus annuities make up about 15 to 20 percent of the exam whereas on the new syllabus starting in October we're going to see annuities make up about 20 to 30 percent of the exam. Also you can see down below the two final topics interest rate swaps and determinants of interest are now zero percent tested because they are not on the exam anymore. They used to make up about zero to 10% of the exam each. You can pause the video if you wanna take a closer look at that chart. Now, overall, looking at the changes in the distribution of topics on the exam, it looks like there's going to be a bit more attention put towards annuities, loans, and bonds, but I really don't think you're going to notice much of a difference there since the distribution hasn't changed drastically. You're also obviously not going to see anything on interest rate swaps and determinants of interest. Overall, with the removal of those two topics, I would only expect your study time to reduce by about maybe two weeks or so. So again, I definitely would not recommend delaying your exam FM if you were planning to take it in the next few months. I would not delay it until October just to save two weeks or so of study time. And again, if you are in the beginner or the rising phase of your actuarial journey, you do not need to worry about exam FM. You only need to worry about this once you get to the intermediate phase of your actuarial journey. Now, just like for exam P, if you you are an AAC member, there is a complete breakdown of the exam, FM changes in the exam resources of the Actuary Accelerator community, and the AAC opens for enrollment starting next week, April 18th, which is Monday. It is open for enrollment until Thursday, April 21st. If you want to get on the wait list to make sure that you don't miss that opening period, then you go to etchedactuarial.com slash accelerator, and you will get all the information there about how to get onto the wait list. Our AAC members get access to study materials for exam P. They will get the FM study materials when they are released in the coming months. You get access to our WhatsApp groups for each exam, our tutoring sessions, our forums, plus everything else that will help you become a top candidate for actuarial positions. Now, I said before that there are some things that you need to do before you take an actuarial exam, so if you want to know more about that, then you can go watch this video next. And that is all for this week. I will see you next Tuesday.